Uh, I know I'm a little late on this. I know I'm a little late on this. Uh, but uh, I did want to talk about the People's Convention. Because I got to see a majority of the People's Convention. It was like five hours long. Um, I'll say this. I definitely watched way more of the People's Convention than I did either the Democratic or the fucking Republican Convention. Uh, the travesty of that. Plus, a lot of my friends were there. Uh, Ron Placone was on it. Graham Elwood was on it. Eleanor Goldfield did a piece. Uh, you know, Nick, Nick's, a, Nick's great. Nick's done my podcast a couple times. Nick Brana talked about the People's Party a couple times on my podcast. So, uh, I, I, I know about... I've, I've known about them for quite some time. And to, to see the momentum build up, especially... Um, Especially after, I think, what happened in March with Tulsi's endorsement of Joe Biden and Bernie's endorsement of Joe Biden. Uh, I think something like this needed to happen where, you know, a lot of a lot of people were feeling hopeless, including myself, in terms of electoral politics. I, I still kind of feel mildly hopeless. I'm more cynical and jaded about electoral politics being the way to kind of solve anything I, I, I don't think that's the that's going to be the uh, the smoking gun it's a part of the solution it's not the solution I think a lot of people think that it's the solution that once we get Trump out of office everything will, will be hunky dory and um, that's just not true especially if you pay attention to how the state of electoral politics has worked over the last, you know, 30, 40 years. And Joe Biden has been a part of that. He's, he is a part of the establishment politics uh, that, that, is, that, is, that has brought us to where we are. That has led to the, the, the rise of Donald Trump. Uh, and and, and there, there's no one in the Democratic Party willing to, you know... Um, say anything like that that hey you know we we made some bad calls uh and it led to this really bad thing uh and if they would i think a lot more people would still be a uh a part of that party but they are they're not uh and and there's a lot of vitriol from from mainstream democrats uh on the voter level that uh, i that i know i face a lot um uh, so, you know, the People's Convention was something that wh- when, I, when I heard about it, I, w- I was rather excited about it. And, you know, the, it, it was initially only going to be like two hours, but then they added a bunch more speakers and it became a much larger event. And they did it virtually um, without, you know, they didn't need the bells and whistles because it's a people's party. They're not funded by corporations. They're not funded by the, 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 the big news networks and uh, all, all of that stuff. They're, they're funded by regular average people and that's what they're trying to build. They're, they're trying to build a party that is going to be representative of the people. And if you look at a lot of their... Uh, a lot of their policies, a lot of the ideas that they support, a lot of the things that they want to put forward out there, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a socialist labor party. It's kind of what we need. You know, you, you, you have two major corporate parties in this country that have essentially, like, eviscerated the, the American working class. So what we need is a party that is going to bring them up. And they're, and they're not running a candidate in 2020 um, because that's unrealistic and they know that. So their goal is to get candidates for... Um, local and maybe state level uh, positions you know maybe some city council members a mayor governor uh, maybe all the way up to Congress by 2022 which I think is doable and and then in 2024 be able to run a viable presidential candidate uh, and before everybody you know, pisses on this idea because you're a mainstream Democrat and, it's a, and, and you need the duopoly to be the duopoly, I would uh, very much encourage you to go check out my video on the election system, on electoral politics, on this bashing of third parties, 
Um, and just hear me out on it. Um, give it a listen. Give yourself an hour. Or fuck it. If you don't want to find it, because I know people are lazy about that shit, shoot me a message and I'll send you a link to that podcast. Because we've done this shit before. We've had viable third parties in this country before um, that people agreed with in the early 20s that were far more to the left than the Democratic Party and definitely far more to the left than the fucking Republican Party. So this this idea of starting a new party um, and slowly building this thing up and introducing these progressive ideas that we very much need is not something that is new and crazy it's very much done has been done before in fact the republican party came out of being a third party and now is a is a prominent corporate party um so you know i address a lot of the history behind it uh there was a little bit of controversy after the people's convention because they did not mention Julian Assange. And, you know, I, I don't like the infighting within, within sort of the progressive circles. Uh, and, and some of the critiques were coming from people that I know and I'm friends with and, you know, that I, that I like, uh, that, that, are, that are good folks doing good things. And they're pro, they're, they're, they're major, like, Assange activists and part I think part of the issue was also having uh, someone like Ryan Knight who was rather neoliberal and you know mainstream Democrat um, until this recent primary and has kind of switched over to being a little bit being more more socialist and um, you know he was a booster of Bernie and all that sort of stuff so you know people change and uh, I, I would hope that you can accept the change. I know there's a lot of people that are a little bit more cynical about that sort of stuff of kind of the, the, the wolves in sheep clothing. And, and I understand that. I, I understand that we should be wary about those things. Um, and we should. And we should. But, you know, I, I, I think for him to uh, to be as openly socialist and take all the attacks that he takes and I've been there because I I face some of the same attacks probably on the lesser level because I'm I'm not as 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 big as as Ryan um, it's not I mean you you don't willingly just take that shit to take that shit like you really have to believe in what you believe in in order for for you to take the amount of shit that comes towards you and, you know, with, with Assange's trial moving to the States, and I believe today is the first day, or today's when it's getting moved. Uh, I can't remember the exact details. But with that happening, it's... They did make a statement about it today. They did make a statement about it at the People's Convention. And, yeah... Uh, I, I think that's not awesome, uh, but that doesn't mean that they are ignoring Assange. Um, they have made they have made pro Assange statements. They are on on the side of Julian Assange and on the side of of, of, of free press and uh, against censorship and all that kind of stuff. So, but the People's Convention, I think, was more about bringing a group of people that don't exactly believe in the in the same things and saying hey you know politics doesn't have to be as divisive as what it is and uh you can have deferring opinions and we can value those things those things can be an asset rather than a uh, a problem a weakness for for the party Right, and and we can give people a little bit more, um, you know, really a, a progressive platform. Really listen to what the people have to say and uh, go from there. So, they, I don't think they mentioned Assange because that was sort of the the spirit of it. Now, I understand, like, I know 
there have been some people that are like, well, Assange shouldn't be a, a political topic. And sure, but it, it has become a political topic. What to do with Julian Assange has become a, a, a very political topic to people. And it, to, to a lot of progressives, including myself, I, I, I do want a candidate to have an opinion on Assange. Uh, and, you know, the only one that, in, in my opinion, what, what I saw in the primaries that had an opinion on Assange that I lined up with was Tulsi Gabbard, who basically said that she would pardon him and Snowden and Chelsea Manning and, uh, you know, like champion whistleblowers and heed their words instead of... Now, she kind of veered away from a lot of that stuff. And, uh, I mean, she is on, again, it's like Twitter platitudes... Uh, talking about Assange and all that, but she's also been pro contact tracing, which is kind of weird. Um, especially when you're like, I want to heed the word of what people like Edward Snowden are, are going to say, and um, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not quoting there, but yeah, it's a it's a little it's a little strange, you know. But I do want to know, like like Joe Biden basically called him a, a cyber terrorist or some shit like that. And it's like, yeah, man, I I think anybody that has, like, the newest version of the iPad is a cyber terrorist to you. Like, you you don't understand how technology works at all. And, you know, like, you're one of those guys that are like, back in my day, a calculator was a big deal. Like, you're you're that guy. Uh, So, you know, maybe fuck off on this. Like... I'm not going to support him on that regard. I don't think Donald Trump has a great view on Julian Assange. Trying to think if anybody... Oh, and then Andrew Yang and I got a lot of shit. He basically said that he would... He would... Uh, set him to trial, which which is what's happening now. Uh, you know, so I guess... I guess Andrew got... Got his thing for what he would want to do with... Well, about Julian Assange, and um, this is uh, you know it's just it's just not a fair fair trial. Anyway, so so I'll I'll, I'll get into Assange a little later in the week, but um, yeah, I just uh, you know I I hate the in, I I don't like to see the infighting because because I do think that the the pro Assange folks um, that you know currently are in DC and doing really good work and and the People's Party. I think can work together rather than uh, be at each other's throats about this stuff because, you know, I, I, I there there was a bunch of issues that really didn't get addressed uh, in the People's Convention. Like I don't think anybody talked about like vertical farming uh, and 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 like uh, alternative you know farming or or uh, anything about like uh, universal education or immigration reform or anything like that. It, it, again, it's like, I think they were just trying to get people excited about the, the fact that there is something different out there. Um, and it doesn't have to be so polarizing. Uh, I think there's a lot of times where people get stuck because it's, because things get polarizing and they, and they don't like politics. So, you can be a libertarian socialist or you could just be a regular old fucking socialist or you could be just a liberal and you know you're open to trying new ideas but you don't really claim the label of of socialist but you can join the movement for a people's party because you believe that people should be treated better that's possible you're you're a progressive you were a democratic socialist you were what have you right the the, the whole point is that they wanted people to come together and, and kind of really point out the the issues with the system. And I think they did. Uh, it, you know, just because something wasn't mentioned in the convention doesn't mean that uh, they don't believe in it anymore. But, yeah, I would, I would have liked to see a little bit more about certain policies. And, but... You know that's that's why they have the the weekly calls that they do and all that sort of stuff. So uh, peoplesparty.org, go check it out. I've talked about them a bunch. I did a whole big video about them. I have had Nick on my podcast a couple times. You can go listen to that. 
or message me and I'll send you these links or however you want to fucking do that. Um, yeah, I just, I think we need to be a little bit more unified over, over, over on the left. Uh, so. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this, uh, and you enjoy any of my content, please make sure you hit that like button. Please make sure you hit that share button. Uh, and make sure that you are subscribed to this channel on whatever platform you're listening to. If you're listening to the audio version, if you're listening to the video version on YouTube, Facebook, or Rockfin, um, uh, especially if you're on Rockfin and you're tired of YouTube uh, with its ads and the censorship and everything, go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha and you, and you basically get all my videos. <clears throat> the, it's on a freemium model. And they help uh, content creators get uh, get paid for their work. Uh, you can find everything that I do, including my live virtual stand-up comedy show dates, on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you so much.